Embedded systems often have real-time requirements. It could be that you must sample some data from a sensor every 500 microseconds with a jitter less than 2 microseconds, or that you must acknowledge some data input in less than 500 microseconds. During test of your system, it is of course important to monitor and verify these timing requirements. One solution could be to instrument your application and use some kind of cycle counter or hardware-based timer to measure the time. And this data can then be included in the test report. But one problem with this is that the instrumentation actually affects the real-time behavior of the application. And if you have requirements on microsecond level, it might affect the real-time behavior too much. Another issue with this is that you don't really get any information of why the test failed. Many microcontrollers and MPUs have real-time trace capabilities. For example, Cortex-M, A and R cores could have something called ETM, the hardware block highlighted here in this picture. ETM stands for Embedded Trace Macrocell, and it's used for generating instruction trace and in some cases also data trace for the core it's connected to. It generates inf this information without affecting the real-time behavior of the core at all. For other architectures, there might be similar solutions with real-time trace. Lauterbach Development Tools and their tool suite Trace32 gives you full flexibility when it comes to debugging and tracing your embedded system. It has all the features that you need to analyze the runtime behavior of your application. Lauterbach Trace32 is very suitable to be used in, in a test environment. It has an API that can be used for doing all the features that you have in Trace32. So here I have prepared an example using a Python script, and it will import the Trace32 module, and then later on, it will start Trace32 and then connect to Trace32 using the API. And we have some helper function here to set up the target. And with set up the target, I mean that we will configure the debugging and establish a connection to the debug to the target, and also download the binary to flash or to RAM, and of course, also load the symbols to the, in the debugger. Then I will run some tests here. Uh, I will not focus on that, uh, but then I have set up some timing requirements here. I have two different functions, one called sample sane sensor and another one sample temp data that I have some requirements on. And in this case, uh, the, uh, the requirement is actually here. So the time in between two samples of a sensor, the, the time can't exceed 501 microseconds. Then later on, I actually, after running my test, I actually read out the timing data from the trace. So this is done completely without instrumenting our code at all. And then I just have a uh, some code snippet here that actually verify if we meet the requirements down here. And if we fail to meet the requirements, we actually save the trace here. And by, for do by doing that, we can later on open this trace in a simulator to actually see what was why it failed. Or, or at least hopefully we can see why it failed. So, I will actually start running my Python script here, and it will start trace32. And there we have it, and then it will run the test and analyze the timing data and so on. And then at the end, as you can see here, we actually had one test that did fail, and that means that if one of the tests fail, we actually store the trace in, a, in, a, in a, this folder here. So now the test was completed and I can start now a trace32 simulator like that and I'm going into this folder and 
In this folder, there are some files. It's the L file, which actually the symbols for the application, some memory contents, and the trace file, as you can see here, and also a script that actually configures the simulator and load trace in the simulator. So let's run that script. So this script loads the trace that I have just recorded in my with my Python script, and we can analyze it here in a, in a simulated way. So the function, one of the function that we had, or the function that we had issues with is actually this one, sample sensor here. And here we can actually see timeline of when it is executing. So this is actually an ISR, an interrupt service routine. So it should run uh, in every 500 microseconds. We can actually zoom in here somewhere. And if I click on this one again, we can see, for example, here we're executing. This is it is executing, and here it's executing again. And if I highlight it like this, it's roughly 500 microseconds here. But it did seem like in some occasion we actually failed to meet requirements. So it was not uh, on 500 microseconds. It exceeded uh, 505 microseconds, I think it was. So let's analyze why this happened. Okay, I'm actually going to use a function called distance analysis in, in Trace32. So it's analyzing the time in between two entries of a function. So we can use e either find all distance like this. So as you can see, this function has executed or this ISR had happened uh, 971 times in this trace recording or this test that I did run. And here you can actually see the time. So it's actually very static here. It's 500 microseconds. But if I scroll here somewhere, it actually you will see some different values here. For example, here it's a little bit below and so on. Okay, but how do we locate actually when this failed? Yeah, we can actually right click here again and use distance analysis here instead. So this is an histogram with the time in between two entries of a function, in this case, sample sensor ISR. So most of the time we end up here. So 950 times the time has been between 500 and 501 microseconds. But as you can see down here, it's actually two places. So it actually exceeds 505. So it's in between 505 and 506 microseconds. So how can we analyze this? I actually am going to right click on this one and use go to first out here. So then it's actually jump this, for example, this chart here actually jump to this occasion in trace here. So here we have the function sample sensor. And as you can see here is one entry and here is another one. And as you can see, it's uh, exceeding 505 microseconds here. And it looks a little bit different here. So let's zoom in to this place here. So again, here we have our sample sensor. It's over there. But as you can see here, there's something else running here. And I can see it's actually this function. And I can see, since I have written this code, this is actually another ISR. So sample temp data is an interrupt service routine for another interrupt. And it seems like it's running for a very, very long time here. It's actually running for 5.3 microseconds. So here I can immediately see that, OK, um, this is the reason why we failed to meet the requirements. And we can fix it in many different ways. Of course, we can add priorities. So to the ISR, if you have a microcontroller with nested interrupt possibilities, so you can increase the uh, priority of this one. Uh, but another solution might be actually to fix this one, the other ISR here, because it's not good practice to have an ISR running for more than five microseconds if you have requirements that are on the microsecond level. And I can actually click here, and it's actually an easy fix here, because it actually seems like we have implemented some kind of delay here in, in, in this interrupt service routine, while I less than 400 here. Uh, yeah, 
it's so it can be easily solved. Real-time trace is very useful when analyzing timing issue in your embedded application. But why limit using this feature only to during development? Why not integrate it also in your test system? It can save you both development time and of course development cost. For more information about the Lautwork Trace32 solution, check knowhowsolution.se.